So by now you've probably seen a few of the other videos that I've done. So I started off with an introduction to the EcoFlow River. Then EcoFlow gladly sent me the expansion battery. So the next video was on upgrading the EcoFlow River to the EcoFlow River Max. Then the next video that I did, EcoFlow sent me the 110 watt portable solar panel. So I did the video on that. This is basically the main video. So in this video, what I aim to do is give you a really good introduction to what the EcoFlow River is, what it does, a few use cases as well, some examples of using it in real life. As you may know, um, my prime interest of the EcoFlow River is for my motorhome. So one of the demonstrations that I'm going to do is actually run the motorhome on it and just to show you that working. Let's get on with it and then we'll come back at the end to see what the conclusion is. Right, so here we can see the app and the app will work on Android or iPhone. I've already loaded it and now what we need to do in the app is add our river. So it's telling us to press and hold the IoT button which is here and you'll see that the little Wi-Fi lamp will start flashing on and off. And then it's asking us to make sure that the lamp's flashing and we have to tick that little button and then press next. Go into our Wi-Fi and it will find the Wi-Fi from the EcoFlow. And then we literally click that as though we are connecting to our home Wi-Fi. And then it will associate with that Wi-Fi and then it will ask us to tell, us, tell the, um, the river the Wi-Fi that you're using at home. So your username and password. And that's it, you're in it now. So you can actually see that it's connected because the little flashing symbol is stable. And it's getting, in, it's getting the information from the river. So we can see the temperature, we can see the capacity, we can see, based on how much energy is being used, we can see the amount of time that it will uh, power the device for. Um, also, we've got the ability to turn on and off the little light. Now, this is only relative to the um, the Max version because the standard river doesn't have this. We can do all sorts of fancy things with the lights. We can make them flash on and off and um, strobe and all, all sorts of weird and wonderful things. And uh, yeah, it's entertaining for a few minutes. There you go. I think we'll settle on this. We'll just turn the brightness down and we'll carry on. So underneath the symbol of the battery, we've got the uh, amount of power that we're actually putting into it, which is zero at the moment, and the amount of power that we're taking out of it, which again is basically zero. We've got the, um, the inverter switched on, so you can actually see that's drawing a certain amount of power, even though we've got nothing plugged into it. So we're still consuming one watt. Now we're down to zero watts. <laughs> um, Okay, and you can actually see by turning on the plug, we've got a little lamp switched into it, the power consumption goes up. So, and we've got the graph here that shows us how much consumption we've used. We've also got a light on the front of the unit that can be set to bright or not so bright and also an SOS. And there's a button below the light, so you don't need to fire up the app just to turn the light on. Just by pressing that button, it will toggle through all three states. Then we've also got various um, USB connections and also 12 volt connections. Great if you want to power car type devices like lamps or car vacuums, or in my case, ham radios. And you've also got a couple of little, um, I'm not sure what they're called, but another couple of 12 volt connectors as well for powering things like, I don't know, CCTV cameras, I guess. Interestingly, the uh, the two 12 volt connections give 13.8 volts, I think it is, which is perfect for my amateur radios. Um, here we can see I've just plugged my phone into it. This is the fast charge port. There's three standard USBs, one being a fast charge port, which is this one. And then there's also a USB-C, which is, a I think, an 80 watt port, a PD port, power distribution port. So here we are, we're going to go into the settings of it and we're going to first of all rename it, so I've called it Mike's Max. And then in the settings you can do various different things. You can set the battery to charge to 100% or 80% depending on how you feel that you should manage your battery. 
Um, you can also set the uh, car charging maximum current. Um, you can actually have it to slow charge on the AC if you want. And you, one of the great things with this is you can actually power a device from the AC connection with it plugged into the mains. So you can actually use it as a kind of UPS. So quite a few things that you can do in the setup menu. I'm not going to bore you too much with that. Um, it's all very, very self-explanatory. I've never read the instructions on this. Um, it's very, very intuitive. So there you go. You can see the specs of it all on the screen. Um, now then, let's put it through its tests. Here I'm using a slow cooker, an Instapot. Now, typically these will take quite a bit of energy to get them up to uh, temperature or, or whatever cooking level it is that you're on. So I'm enabling XBoost. And when you enable XBoost, what this means is it will basically um, allow for double the amount of power that it that it is capable of. How it does it? No idea. Not really interested, to be honest. But anyway, so this Instapot is somewhere in the region of around about 1200 watts. But the EcoFlow can only actually deliver up to 600 watts. So it does this with smoke and mirrors, I guess, and a bit of magic. Now, here we are powering a fairly substantial kettle, and I think this is rated at three kilowatts. So the EcoFlow is having a really good job at doing this. Uh, you can see it. I think it's putting out 600 watts or even nearly 700 watts. And the kettle actually does start to boil. However, it then trips, and in a, in a second you'll see on the screen, just below the output uh, wattage, it will actually show up um, overload, and the red light, there you go. So that's tripped, and uh, and it's cut the power to it. Clearly, the, uh, the kettle was demanding too much power. Now, here we are using a hairdryer, and I think this hairdryer is rated at 2,000 watts. Um, so let's turn it on. Okay, so this is on its lowest setting. And it's quite happily handling that. It's, you know, it's probably not as good as if it was plugged into the mains. But we are using a battery at the end of the day. This is it on its higher setting. And you can definitely feel that it's warmer. And then we can turn it up to the maximum setting, which, it, in truth, doesn't really feel that much difference. So, again, the EcoFlow is doing as good a job as it possibly can. Um, it's, you know, it, it's, it's capable of 600 watts. It's as simple as that. So, here we've got a nice simple test for it. This is a 70-watt soldering iron. And uh, I do speed this up a little bit because... Well, most most um, soldering irons do take a while to heat up to temperature. This took around about, I would say, two minutes, which is a little bit longer than it would do if it was plugged into the mains. But again, it's um, yeah, it's doing a good job. So, uh, power power drill. Yeah, works perfect. And that's, uh, yeah, I would say that's as good as it is when it's plugged into the main. Uh, leaf blower. Again, the idea of this is to demonstrate that this device can be used for all sorts of different uses. Um, in your caravan, in your tent. Uh, it really is quite versatile. Having power, having 240 volts everywhere... Um, is, well, yeah, it's, I think it's a, a game changer. This is just my old vacuum that I use for uh, vacuuming stuff up, sawdust and stuff like that. But again, I would say it's as good as if it was plugged into the mine. So, here we've got a jigsaw. I haven't got any wood to saw, but... Yeah. Again, I would say that is equally as good as if it was plugged into the mains. Circular saw. Now, I would say this is a bit slower. Um, 
I would say maybe it's a little bit underpowered. And again, the, the reciprocating saw, I would say, not as good as if it was plugged into the mains. Now, this is the motorhome being powered from the EcoFlow. Uh, 192 watts is what it's pulling at the moment, um, and that's just really the fridge. When the fridge gets up to temperature, it actually demands a lot less than that. Here I am out on a camping trip, and I bought this travel kettle full of water. Um, it took around about two and a half minutes, which is about the same as what it would take if it was uh, plugged into the mains. Now, here I am cooking a little bit of breakfast, and this is just a bit of fun, really. Uh, I've got a little teppanyaki grill, and I'm doing some bacon and some sausage patties. Um, and this really took a toll on the EcoFlow. It literally did drain it down to nothing, and it also took a little bit of time to recover after this. But, as you'll see by the video, it did a great job. So, if you're in the middle of a field and you want bacon and eggs, then the EcoFlow is what you need. Also, during this trip, I also did some solar charging with the Renergy. And again, I was really, really impressed with how quickly it recharged. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, hopefully it was interesting and hopefully you got a good impression for this. It really is, in my opinion, a really, really great product. There are alternatives out there and I'm not comparing it to those because I haven't used any of those. But um, in my limited experience, just using the EcoFlow, it's brilliant for what it does. It's got limitations, of course, but uh, if all you want to do is a few nights off-grid in your camper van or in your tent and you want to power the lights, you want to charge your phones, uh, maybe even boil the odd kettle, then you can do all of that and more. So it's got a massive thumbs up from me. I'd just like to say a huge thank you to EcoFlow as well for providing all of this equipment for evaluation. I'm going to carry on using it over the next month or so. And uh, yeah, hopefully it all goes well. So anyway, look forward to catching you again soon. If you've enjoyed it, don't forget to subscribe and tick that little bell icon and then you'll get notified of more videos like this. But for now, I'll say farewell. Thanks for watching. Bye bye from me.